Okay, one of the questions that we were given um, was, um, I want my connection with God to be stronger, but I haven't been to church for a long time now, and I don't know how to get my connection back with him. Okay, well that's a really interesting question. And the good news is, you don't need to be in any special building or place to form a connection with God. You can pray wherever you are, whatever you're doing. So the first thing I'd say is find a quiet space, sit and ask God to help hit you, strengthen that connection. Use the words that Jesus gives, the Lord's Prayer, to start with and then take it from there. And then connect yourself with the church in some way and with a group of people who can help you, just like some of us are doing in that brilliant workshop Hannah did earlier with all that string. We need to be part of uh, God's body, but you don't need a special place to pray in. God hears you wherever you are. Uh, so next question, what games do you play? What games do I play? My favorite computer game until a few weeks ago was Plants vs. Zombies. Any, any of you like that? Some Plant vs. Zombies fans here, okay. Uh, my favorite game now, though, isn't out yet in the UK. One of my sons makes computer games, and he has a new game coming out, which is released in Australia and Canada at the moment, but it's coming out in the UK in a few weeks' time. I think it's really brilliant. I am biased, but I really do think it's very good. It's called Heaven Strike Rivals, and it's by uh, Square Enix and Mediatonic, if you know the uh, games world, uh, and I think it's going to be great. <laughs> Fab. Okay, um, next question. Why do innocent and lovely people, including children, get seriously ill? How is that fair? How come if he loves everyone, he allows that to happen? Thank you. Very uh, uh, profound question. And however much you think about it, none of us in the end can ever answer that question with certainty uh, about any particular person. We know there's bad stuff in the world because the world is what the Bible calls fallen or broken. And part of the consequence of that is that innocent people, even those we love, suffer. When somebody gets sick, it's not because of anything wrong they've done uh, uh, in the normal sense of the word. And sometimes there isn't rhyme or reason about it. But we pray and we trust that somehow God holds them and us and the whole world in his love. And one day, his kingdom will come and his will be done. And so next question, it's a very serious question this. What colour does a smurf go when you choke it? <laughs> what colour does a smurf go when you choke it? I have to say, I've never choked a smurf. So I do not know the answer to every question you're going to ask me. And I don't know. I pr guess probably purple. But it might depend on what colour it is to start with. <laughs> Okay, what was the last app that you downloaded? Uh, the last app that I downloaded was, um, that's very dull and boring, it was a Chromecast app, because I got a Chromecast thing for Christmas, and it helps me watch Netflix on my telly uh, without getting out of my chair, so I really like that. So. Um, what are your thoughts on euthanasia? My thoughts on euthanasia are that uh, life is really, really precious. It's the most precious thing we've been given. And we shouldn't mess with uh, the beginning and end of life. And uh, our society is moving now to a place where it wants to uh, do that. Uh, and I think we should be really, really cautious about it. And so do many other people. Okay, this person texting, Hiya, my question is, I get picked on at school because I'm a Christian. How do I deal with it or even stop it? Okay, that's really hard. Um, that's really, really hard if you're picked on at school because you're a Christian, and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I think uh, there's part of being a Christian which is about sometimes living differently from people around you and therefore part of being a Christian is sometimes uh, finding that difficult because of that. I think Christians are meant in those circumstances uh, to try and do all they can to get on with people, uh, to love them back, to forgive them. Uh, but if you're really being picked on at school in a serious way, you should talk to other people about that as well, because it's not fair that you should be in a school situation. The Christian faith is the core faith of this country. 
It underwrites everything we are as a country and as a nation. And it shouldn't be that somebody in England is picked on because they are a Christian. Uh, so next question, what would you do in a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> uh, I'd probably run away and hide under the table. Okay, what would you do if you had one million pounds? What would I do if I had a million pounds? Well, of course, I'm, bi I'm a bishop, so of course I'd give it all away to youth work in the Diocese of Sheffield. Uh, I, 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 I hope I give some of it away, because I practice what Christians should practice, that we give a portion of what we receive back to God. I think I'd probably buy a house because I don't own a house. I live in a house because of my job, but I don't own a house. And I'm just beginning to think and when eventually I retire, I'm going to have to have a house to live in. So I'd probably buy one of those and I'd share it out. Interestingly, the Diocese of Sheffield has put aside a million pounds for youth and children's work across the diocese in the next few years. And we'll be telling parishes in a few weeks how we're hoping to invest that and how you can help us uh, do that. It's a really important thing. There's nothing more important in the life of the church. All right, so next question. Um, who would win in a fight between a bear and a shark? Who would win in a fight between a bear and a shark? I think it would depend on whether it was on land or in the water. If it was in the water, I would bet on the shark. If it was on land, I'd bet on the bear. Uh, uh, but probably the shark. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Is um, a war on terrorism justifiable? Uh, I think... Uh, I don't like that language of war on terror, actually. I think we have to meet terrorism, uh, which is a horrible, terrible thing, with a number of responses, and we need our security services and armed forces to help us do that. Uh, but the connecting of all of what we do together and calling it a war makes it something it's not really, because a war is something we should enter into it's waged between two states and we should enter into it only very carefully and only under certain conditions, uh, self-defense uh, and so on. So I, I don't like the phrase. I think action against terrorism is important because safety and security of innocent people is important. Uh, but also carrying on with our normal lives when there's a terrorist threat and loving those around us and being good neighbors to others in our community and schools, particularly those of the Muslim faith who often feel uh, justified justifiably picked on uh, because of the present climate is really important. Um, how long have you been ordained and are you a dog or a cat person? Oh, thank you. That's an interesting combination of questions. Uh, I was ordained in um, 1983, so I can't remember. How, I think that's 30... It'll be 32 years this year since I was ordained. I was very young when I was ordained. Uh, uh, and... Uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't have either a dog or a cat. Uh, I think if I did, I could imagine myself perhaps owning a dog. I could never imagine myself owning a cat. I probably just offended half the room. I'm really sorry about that. Okay. Do you feel that the kids of today have more pressures than when you were young? Do you have more pressures than when I was young? Yes, you do. Yeah, you do, definitely. I think you do. Uh, I think the expectations on you are higher. I think social media, though it's a great thing in some ways, creates its own pressures, as do the national media. I think you worry as a generation far more about what you look like and what people think of you than my generation did. And I also think you're a generation further away from strong Christian roots which I think are the best antidote to stress and pressure. And therefore, you have to work harder to put down your own Christian roots because you get less in general from your family and your friends and your school and society. Um, what made you want to go to church? What made me want to go to church? I, I was uh, sent when I was uh, five to Sunday school by my mum and dad. Uh, and then I discovered over lots of years the wonder of Christian faith. Uh, but actually, I don't go to church because that in itself is a good thing to do. I go to church because I'm a Christian and because I love God and want to learn how to love my neighbors better. And for that reason, I belong to the church. And for that reason, I go to the church. So I, going to church wouldn't make sense as an activity without those other things, but my faith is really, really important to me. 
Okay, how do you feel from a Christian point of view about Jews being attacked in the streets? I think it's terrible. I think the rise of anti-Semitism is absolutely terrible. Actually, tomorrow I will be doing something I do every year. And joining in something they have there every year called Hospital Sunday, which is a service to which they invite faith and community leaders, including me, and we sing the Psalms in Hebrew, which is beautiful, uh, and we gather in the synagogue and they uh, give gifts to charity. And I know that one of the themes of that gathering tomorrow will be the rise of attacks on Jewish people across Europe, which are quite marked at the moment, uh, and I think it's a, it's a really bad, unhealthy sign for our society. Um, do you like snow? I love snow. I love snow. Anybody else like snow? I love snow except if I have to go out and get somewhere uh, in the snow. I don't like it quite so much then. Uh, and who had snow on Boxing Day? Just about all of us, I guess. We built a nine foot high snowman in our house. It was fantastic. It was the tallest snowman in the country for a short period of time, I think. And it was retweeted by the Look North Weather Girl. It was great. Wow. <laughs> so the next question is, how can you know God's plan for your life? Well, we had a great talk on that earlier uh, about making choices from Jen here. Many of you heard it. It's uh, you, you listen. When you're a Christian, the question changes about your life from what do I want to do to God, what do you want me to do? Not what I want to do, but God, what do you want me to do? And then you begin with that question, a process of discovering what that will mean in many different ways. And that's through uh, listening and prayer, through thinking, through using your brain, through talking to friends, uh, and making those decisions and choices as you go on. So you stay in uh, the calling that God has for you, which is always, I think, uh, the best way and the most fulfilled way to live. Um, on average, how many hours a day do you wear a dog collar? How many hours a day do I wear a dog collar? Hmm, probably about um, uh, eight or ten, I would think. I wear it when I'm uh, working in public to show who I am, to show that I'm a priest and bishop in the church so that people know who I am if I'm in a public place. But I don't wear it to bed or, you know, when I'm watching telly in the evening or when I'm playing computer games normally or at the gym. <laughs> at the gym. Do you think the Old Testament should be given the same status in faith as the New Testament? Yeah, the Old Testament is part of the Christian Bible just like the New Testament is and the whole Bible should be read and studied. There's some fantastic stories in the Old Testament. If you've never read it, dip into it. But don't start at the beginning and try and read it to the end. It's not meant to be read like that. Uh, however, both Old and New Testament are meant to be interpreted through the person of Jesus. Uh, God speaks most of all through the person of Jesus. So always read the Bible interpreted through what Jesus says and does. Um, can you do 25 squats in one minute? No, absolutely not. <laughs> and I don't think there's ever, ever been a time in my life when I could do 25 squats in one minute. And please don't ask me to try. <laughs> Do you think the Christian church should talk with other religions such as Islam and Judaism? Yes, we should. Uh, uh, for many different reasons. We're, we're asked to love our neighbours as ourselves. Uh, and uh, part of loving our neighbours is to talk to them. And in this world, and in this city, and, and everywhere where you live, we are neighbours with uh, Muslims and with Jews and Hindus and people of lots of other faiths. So yes, we should. And I meet regularly with faith leaders across uh, Sheffield, as does Bishop Peter in Doncaster. So really important part of what we do.